light and of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father, Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace, to people of good will. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O oh, wicked one, you will surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. that is led by God. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not kill, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. A 
If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Do I have to, Jesus? Jesus, why couldn't you have said something like this? Uh, If your brother sins against you, go and send him a really passive-aggressive email about it. Make sure to blind CC his boss, or better yet, the whole office. Or if your sister sins against you, go and tell all your friends about it behind her back. Or how about if anyone sins against you, it's because he's a horrible person and the entire internet needs to know about it so everyone can share in your righteous wrath. But if you sin against anyone, it's not your fault because you've been under a lot of stress lately, which is totally unique to you and not something anyone else can relate to at all. And anyway, they need to learn to take a joke. And anyway, they're a Biden slash Trump supporter, so they're literally dumber than a rock and or more evil than Hitler and deserve to have the burning heat of a thousand nuclear bombs dropped on them. Why couldn't Jesus have said that? But instead, he tells us that when we have a problem with someone, we should take the radical, unthinkable step of talking to them about it like grown-ups. Crazy, I know. And, uh, well, I am as guilty as anyone else of trying all of the alternative uh, responses. But as important and as relevant as Jesus' steps for conflict resolution are, There is a more fundamental theme in today's readings that uh, really stands out to me. Jesus is, he's talking about the community of the church, about how our actions affect that community. Sin causes real rupture. Common prayer causes real unity. God tells the prophet Ezekiel that he has a responsibility for the welfare of his fellow Israelites, such that God will hold him accountable if he fails to try to dissuade them from evil. St. Paul tells us to owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, because love is the fulfillment of the law. In a nutshell, what God's word is saying to us today is we're all connected. Our actions affect other people. and We have responsibilities toward them. This reminds me of one of the few homilies that I can remember exactly word for word. Uh, This happened while I was in seminary. Uh, The first reading for the day was the story of Cain and Abel uh, from Genesis. You'll recall that Cain and Abel were the two sons of Adam and Eve. They both made an offering to God. Uh, God accepted Abel's offering, but he rejected Cain's. So Cain killed his brother, committing the first murder. God then asks Cain, where is your brother? To which Cain replies by lying, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? In other words, what does it matter to me? When the priest got up to preach on this reading, he came to the ambo and he said the following word for word. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes. And then he sat down. You're not, you're not getting off quite that easy. <laughs> but I believe that that is the essential message that we need to be reminded of. And our, our politics, our media, our technology, even our architecture, our society has bought into a mindset of individualism. We're trained to think that we can seal ourselves off from each other, like the watertight compartments in the Titanic. And uh, I think we all know how well that turned out. I can't remember where it was that I saw this, but someone recently pointed out that until about 100 years ago, if you wanted to hear music, you had to either play an instrument or know someone who did. Now, you know, we can just put our earbuds in and have let our own personal playlist uh, drown out any any possible interaction we might have with anyone else at the park or in the grocery store. We get around in our cars, keeping the rest of the world safely on the other side of the windshield, carefully choosing which stations or podcasts we listen to in order to avoid having to confront any ideas that we don't already believe. Even the homes that we come back to, or increasingly these days, the homes we never leave, especially since the pandemic, are themselves more and more fortresses of solitude rather than places where life is lived in community. You know, again, there's, there's a great article that I, I read 
uh, again, while I was in seminary, that, that points this out. But only a couple of generations ago, you know, people would spend a warm day sitting out on the front porch where you probably see your neighbors doing the same thing. And you might invite someone who's walking by on the sidewalk to come up and join you for a conversation, a glass of lemonade. Now our homes are designed precisely to keep the rest of the world out. If we do venture outside, we do so on our backyard decks or patios. That's what I was doing uh, this morning. Carefully fenced in so that we're not forced to acknowledge the inconvenient existence of other people. When it got cold, families would gather by the fireplace to play games or sing or tell stories or just be together. Now we all go to our own rooms with our own Netflix accounts and we may spend more time talking with people online than we do with those that we share a roof with. Someone I respect said a few years ago, when media and the digital world become omnipresent, their influence can stop people from learning how to live wisely, to think deeply, and to love generously. Today's media do enable us to communicate and to share our knowledge and affections, yet at times they also shield us from direct contact with the pain, the fears, and the joys of others, and the complexity of their personal experiences. For this reason, we should be concerned that alongside the exciting possibilities offered by these media, a deep and melancholic dissatisfaction with interpersonal relations or a harmful sense of isolation can also arise. Uh, that's a quote from Pope Francis uh, in his encyclical Laudato Si, which you know, a lot of times people either uh, dismiss or embrace it as having to do only with the environment and climate change, but it really presents a much broader vision of what Pope Francis calls an integral ecology that involves changing the way that we think about human relationships on all levels. Pope Francis, uh, referring to the, the story uh, that I mentioned earlier, the story of Cain and Abel, along with the other uh, accounts in Genesis of creation and of the flood, Pope Francis writes that these ancient stories full of symbolism bear witness to a conviction which we today share, that everything is interconnected, that genuine care for our own lives and our relationships with nature is inseparable from fraternity, justice, and faithfulness to others. And that phrase, everything is interconnected, he says those words are words almost exactly the same as that seven times throughout that document. And I think that it is that same message that we hear throughout our readings today. You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. Everything is connected. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Everything is connected. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Everything is connected. And it is above all in the Eucharist, here where two or three, or maybe a few more than that of us, where we are gathered in Jesus' name, that this interconnection is realized most fully. In the Eucharist, in fact, all of reality is united. God and humanity are united inseparably in the person of Jesus Christ. Through our communion with him, we're united not only with those of us who are gathered here, but with the entire body of Christ spread throughout the world, those who've gone before us, those who will come after us, the saints in heaven, the holy souls in purgatory. Even the earth itself is part of the mystery. As God takes bread and wine, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and elevates it to become the sign and presence of the new creation. Everything is connected. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes. I believe in one God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, drawn together in faith, let us bring our needs to God with confidence and hope. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church. May the Lord graciously preserve and protect her as a sign of his truth to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For all nations, may their, nations be, may their leaders be governed by the power of the Holy Spirit in love of and service to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. For those blinded by sin, may the compassionate mercy of God lead them to goodness and repentance. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of worship, through the grace of this sacrament, may we be drawn ever more deeply into unity with one another and our triune God. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died from the effects of the coronavirus, may they rest in the peace of God's perfect love. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Lieutenant Colonel Jack L. Duncan, especially for those intentions in our Book of Intentions, as well as those in our prayer line, those we carry in our hearts, and for Lieutenant Colonel Jack L. Duncan, whom we remember at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. God of love and truth, you lead us deeper into relationship with you through every prayer we offer. We ask that you hear the prayers we offer you today and grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Let us live our lives so that all might see that our hearts are restless till they rest in thee. Let us build your kingdom okay. in truth and grace so that all might know they have a right to I got it. Place. Right. Uh, I'll be okay. I can just come over and do it. Thank you. Beauty ever ancient and new Breaking through our deafness so we hear you Shattering the darkness of night, a new day is rising to bring your light to all the world. Let us live our lives so that all might see that our hearts are restless till they rest in thee. Let us build your kingdom. So you are God of all creation. In your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. In the mystery of this water and wine, we have come to share the divinity of Christ and humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Spirit, and humble 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 Strengthened by the body of Christ, taking up the call now to share your light with all the world. Let us live our lives so that all might see that our hearts are restless till they rest in thee. Let us 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 